going to start with Cody Cunningham with Suns.com and then Kevin Zimmerman. Hey, Jay, uh, you're obviously one of the leaders on this team, and many of the guys have spoken throughout the year about the voice you have in the locker room. Uh, just when did you first learn how powerful your voice can be, and how did you learn, you know, the right way to be that vocal leader? Um, you know, just that everything came comes naturally when it comes to leading, I, I feel like, in an NBA locker room, um, and it just came naturally. Well, probably my Boston days, um, I, was, I was thrown into that role of being a leader, and it just – my leadership comes natural just by putting in the work and uh, letting my work speak for itself first before I even say a word. So um, I just think it came naturally back in my Boston days, like four, four or five years into the NBA. Um, and it just comes from the heart. It just comes from wanting my, the best for my teammates and uh, wanting to p compete as a team at the highest level and put myself and my teammates in the position to do so. So that's where this comes from. Next up is Kevin Zimmerman with Arizona Sports, followed by Benjamin Steele. Hey, Jay, I know you guys had two really close games against this team in the regular season, and you had that big rebound the game. Um, but the, were those moments, I don't know how much film you've looked at, but were those two games growth moments as far as tough playoff atmosphere games with a young team where you saw steps forward? Yeah, I definitely remember the, the road trip that we took to Milwaukee, and that was a tough road trip for our team, but... Uh, we prevailed and we came out with a, with a, with a winning record. So uh, I definitely feel like those situations uh, has prepared us for, for moments in this postseason, uh, no doubt about it. Uh, we were playing some tough teams, and obviously Milwaukee is one of the best Eastern Conference team at the time, and um, we, we, we came out on top. We came out with a win on the road in a tough environment. So those situations definitely motivated us uh, as a team to uh, come together and, and know when we can play high-level basketball either at home or on the road. So it definitely gave us some more motivation and, and, and momentum. Next up is Benjamin Steele from the Journal Sentinel, followed by Scott Gretzky. Hey, Jay, you know, with uh, with you playing Milwaukee this series, people are going to ask about your Marquette days. Uh, in your two seasons at Marquette, you know, playing with those scrappy teams, defensive teams, and all the talented teammates you had, what what about those two years prepared you for, you know, you're going on a decade now in the NBA? Uh, I mean, just probably just, just been um, – I learned how to work when I was at Marquette. I learned how to really put work into the game of basketball. Um, two years there, I thought I was working up until I got to that to, to Marquette, and that's when I really found out how to really work when I stepped into the gym. Uh, I learned how to make the days count. Uh, I think that rolled over into my professional career, and I'm um, – I know how to put work in when no one's looking, and I think it's it's it's, it's definitely beneficial for me to take take what I what I what I learned in college and implement that into my NBA career, and that's what I did. I just put the work in and lock myself in the gym like I used to back in back in my college days, and and then let the hard work take care of itself. But I think my my Marquette days definitely taught me how to work, and it's always be a special place for me. Um, I feel like I'm going home. Um, I feel like I'm playing a, a series in my one of my hometowns, so it's a great feeling. Next up is Scott Grodsky from CBS Milwaukee, followed by Evan Burns. Hey, Jay. Uh, ben took some of my, my questions there about the Marquette time as well, but uh, not just uh, the, the school of Marquette, but the city of Milwaukee. What are some of the memories that you have from those, those couple of years when you were in Wisconsin? Well, I've met some um, great people in Milwaukee. I, I hold great relationships with a, um, a few people in Milwaukee still to this day. So, um, like I said, it's a special place to me. Um, I've did a lot of stuff within the city. I've been to Brewers games. Um, I've been to uh, Bucks games back right when I was in college, and uh, I've been to Green Bay Packers games. So uh, I was a fan by default, and I, and I did my part when I was in the city of Milwaukee of just embracing um, the love that I was getting throughout the city and that I get every time I, I touch the, 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 the court there in Milwaukee as a professional. It's always love. So uh, that, space, that place is, uh, will always be special for me and, and my family. So... And um, the relationships that I share with, with the people still who live there uh, will always be will always be there. So it's a great special to me. Next up is Evan Barnes with the Memphis Commercial Appeal. And then I have a question I'm going to ask for Dwayne Rankin. Hi, Jay. I'm um, doing a story on Cameron Payne and just kind of seeing how his journey has has grown from when obviously he was in the bubble last year to now. Just what have you seen from just kind of his attitude and approach for someone who obviously had to grind to get to this point now and being in the NBA Finals for him. Just what, one, what has he meant to this team? And two, just what do you see in his journey? Just, you know, just stands out for just how hard he's worked to get to this point. 
Yeah, you know, uh, Cam, the one thing that sticks out to me now that, that, um, that he gets it. His whole ma- mentality, his mindset is he gets it. He gets how to be a pro. He understands it now. Uh, now that he was in and then was out and now he's back in, he understands what it takes uh, to pe- be a professional athlete, especially an NBA player. Um, he understands to put the work in. He understands all of that stuff uh, that he went through uh, with a test. And he answered. he's, he's answered the, the, the bell uh, repeatedly up until this point to, to, to get to where he is today. So uh, it's no, no coincidence that he's fought back to be an um, uh, NBA basketball player playing in the finals. Um, and what he means to our team is, I mean, he, he, he does a great job of, first of all, talking and having a relationship with Chris, um, with him being his backup and um, him trying to be have a great career like, like, like Chris. Uh, he does a great job of just taking in all the stuff that Chris gives him, all the stuff that I give him, all the co- stuff that Coach Monty gives him um, and applies it on the court. And I think we, 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 we do a good job of helping him, uh, but he does a great job of just applying it. Um, that's all him. It's all him putting the work in and, and wanting the best for himself and wanting the best for his team. So he's special to our team. He's a, he's a great weapon to have. So I have a question um, from Dwayne Rankin from the Arizona Pub- Arizona Republic. He wanted to know how you thought on. Um, where, like, is, where is Dwayne Rankin? Dwayne's with Devin right now. Um, Dwayne. Good. Moore. Oh, go ahead. Okay, okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. Sorry. Dwayne wanted to know um, what you thought about how Devin and DeAndre have started each round of the playoffs. Um, I mean, I think they started the way I expected them to, just locked in, um, locked in on an opponent, locked in on a game plan, leading um, by example and, and, and verbally to our group, um, reading the defense, just reading the game and playing. I think they, done, they, they, they have done a great job of just being who they are, but at the same time trying to mold themselves into whatever that series or that team um, it's forcing us to do be as a team, as as, as individuals. I think it's not a surprise to me that I, that they've came out and uh, performed the way they performed uh, the first few rounds. So I'm mean, I'm happy for them. I'm not surprised at all. They put a lot of work into it, and they're they're hell of a player. So they're doing exactly what they're supposed to do, and we got to do the same thing again coming up tomorrow. Thanks. Um, we're gonna finish up with one question from Christos Saltos from Greece. Hey Jay, hope you're doing well. You are the only guy with uh, NBA Finals experience in this series. What it means for you that, and how how beneficial for your team is this uh, situation? I mean, I'm very grateful for the opportunity, but I'm looking for a different outcome than I did last time. Um, honestly, um, that's all fun that I've been here before, but I didn't. I haven't won anything, so it really doesn't mean anything to me personally. Uh, but I'm, I'm. I use that my last stint as motivation to get back here, to, to have a chance to play for it all again, to, to work my way um, to be in this position. Hopefully, hopefully it's a different result. And that's, that's, that's my motivation in, in it all. So um, it's great to be a part, I mean, be here, be here again and be a part of a special team, but I want to get the job done this time. Great, thanks for the time, Jay. Thank you guys.